In this video we're going to talk about exporting of the moment field from RCB to SLB and PTD. So we'll talk about what we mean by exporting moment field and how this differs from the regular floor export. Uh, we'll then discuss what type of load cases should be exported as a moment field and which should just be exported as per the regular export we covered in the previous video. And then we'll talk about things that need to be considered when exporting moment field, how we need to set up the model and uh, things we need to keep in the back of our mind. So what is exporting of the moment field? So basically what it is, is it's the direct export of the bending moments calculated in RCB per finite element node to SLB and or PTD. So no applied loads or reactions are exported, only the bending moment results are exported. So if we look at this 3D building in RCB, we have some lateral loading, which for this particular floor has generated some bending moment in our slab. So this, this bending moment is calculated in RCB, and when we export the moment field, we don't export the loading, we just export the bending moments that are calculated uh, basically per finite element node, and we then design it in SLB and PTD. Note that also no reactions are exported um, as well from when we use exporting of the moment field. So how this differs from the exporting of the floor, which was discussed in the last video. What exporting of the floor does is that it exports the applied load in RCB, as well as the RCB calculated reactions. So this loading and reactions per floor is exported to SLB and PTD. The bending moments are then recalculated in SLB and PTD with these reactions. So we see here, we have our 3D building, we have some vertical UDLs, and then when we run our analysis in RCB, the program calculates reactions per column and wall. And when we hit export floor, it sends out that individual floor with the uh, applied UDL as well as the uh, reactions from the columns uh, and walls above. So in summary, going over it again, exporting of the moment field sends out just the bending moment results calculated by RCB and no applied loads, whereas exporting of the floor sends out the applied loads as well as RCB calculated reactions to SLB and PTD. Now, the main question is which type of export to use when? So for lateral load cases in RCB, uh, so for wind and earthquake, we have to use moment field. So for example, if we want to design the slab reinforcement for the ultimate lateral load combinations for wind and earthquake, we need to send that out as a bending moment field. Why we have to do that is that the SLB and PTD models are restrained laterally uh, in those two programs and basically we can't apply any lateral load and any lateral load won't have an effect on our structure. So we have to um, basically, we have to get calculate these forces in the 3D RCB program and then send them across as a bending moment to SLB and PTD. For vertical load cases, uh, it is recommended that the uh, floors are just exported as per the regular floor export unless column wall axial shortening with preset is considered. So basically when we export the floor and recalculate uh, the, the bending moments in SLB and PTD, we remove the effects of displacements of the lower floors and shortening of the vertical elements on the lower floors. We, we remove the effect that these, uh, this phenomenon has on the forces on the floor that we are looking to analyze. So for example, looking at this picture here, this, we have our typical floor, and uh, this rent bending moment diagram is for vertical loading, sort of idealized, assuming that the supports don't move. Uh, let's say, let's say for argument's sake, we have the case where the level one transfer floor is deflecting significantly. We also have some shortening of the columns and walls on the floors below. So uh, basically, this support will actually um, re will, will drop down, and hence our bending moment will change. So, and this is just an extreme example. 
assuming that column wall axial shortening isn't considered and there is no construction preset, so meaning that the floor is constructed flat, uh, we see that the bending moment has dropped from this high positive value to this low negative value. So if we were to export this as a moment field without considering any of this preset and column wall axial shortening, the bending moment diagram might be different from what it will be, uh, sort of how it will be constructed. So in summary, we recommend uh, lateral loads be exported as moment fields and vertical load cases be exported just as the usual, the, just as per the typical export floor that was covered in the previous video. Vertical load cases can be exported as moment fields if column wall axial shortening and preset has been considered. So going to RCB, we'll now see how uh, exporting of the bending moment works in practice and we'll see what we have to do to prepare the file. So it's again the same model that we've been working on in the previous videos. And the very first thing that we need to do when exporting of the moment field is to have the load cases and load factors set up between the various programs. So let's go to load cases first. We see that we have our dead and live loads and we have our earthquake loads in RCB in their relevant cases. Now for this example we want to export the bending moment field for the lateral earthquake cases to SLB for a ultimate uh, basically slab design. So in SLB for primary cases in the RCB model we must have uh, dead load live load already set up but we also must have an earthquake in the X and an earthquake in the Y case. This then must be mapped to, to the relevant RCB case. So in this case, they just match one to one. So load case three matches load case three, four, and four. So that's all good. If we hit OK, or we'll hit cancel so we don't lose results. And with load cases defined, we also have to have our load factors set. So in the RCB model, we have all of our ultimate combinations for earthquake defined with envelope ticked. So this means that for the column wall design, we'll be designing for these earthquake cases. However, as we're also going to be exporting this moment field to SLB, we have to have <coughs> these earthquake cases as well. So here we have our, all of our service KCS combinations in SLB for our deflection checks, but we have to have these ultimate earthquake ones in again. So one option is simply to copy from this tab, paste it into this one, or what you can do is uh, the default the default table we see here, hit export to generate a Excel table, hit export from the RCB tab as well, and then just copy paste the relevant chunk into the SLB table. Then back on the SLB tab, just hit re-import, which is what I did in this case. It was qu much quicker than manually typing it in. So we have our load cases defined, we also have our load combinations and clicking in the cells we see that this is for SLB load case earthquake X. So they have to match um, so that we can design the slab for these uh, basically these worst case ultimate earthquake cases. Again hitting cancel so we don't lose the results. To perform the bending moment export, we go, as we did in the previous video, to either we can do the individual floor here under uh, export, or we can just go to the batch export tab. And we need to hit export moment field. So we select the various levels that we want to export the moment field for. Uh, we'll keep the settings as we did previously. When we hit execute, we will be asked which cases will be exported as moment field. In this case we want our earthquake X and Y lateral loads to be exported as moment field. Dead and live loads will go will come through as uh, basically vertical loading and reactions and will be recalculated. These, these cells that are blank means that we haven't actually input any loading for this particular case. So in this model our wind and in wind ultimate in the X and Y is blank. So hitting OK the batch export and run will run again, but with export moment field on.
and with the analysis complete we can have a look and see what has been done so hitting exit and going to the level 5 slab so one of the floors that we exported uh, we'll just look at the earthquake in the X bending moment as calculated by RCB so we'll just get a few values on screen so just some peak values here in these two locations. Uh, we can't look at the uh, uh, the SLB results because the only thing that we can look at via batch export is deflections. So we will, and p a working for PTD, so we'll just open up the SLB program. And open up the individual file that was exported. So as mentioned in the previous video, whenever we perform a batch export and run, the program is generating all of these files individually for each of those floors, which we can then open. So we want the level 5 model, and we want the earthquake in the X case. So the, the first thing that we'll, that we'll see that we, that um, or should also be mentioned, is that if we switch on the visibility of all of the loads for the cases that were exported as moment field, we see that nothing has been nothing is exported. Why is that? We've sent the results out as bending moments rather than um, applied loads. So we don't want to have a double up of the uh, of the forces for this particular case. Whereas for dead load, we see we've got our variable distribution of reactions. We should also see our pressures there as well. So if we color by pressure we have the the dead load and the live load applied as well plus all of the reactions on the walls above whereas for the earthquake case we have nothing and nothing because all of the results have come through as a bending moment field so just to see that it's come through correctly we go to the earthquake x case results and hit bending mx so looking at the peak values minus 120 minus and positive 184.7 we see that they are exact, and if we just put them side by side, we'll minimize this as well. We should see that the values are exact in those locations. So basically what we did was we got the bending moment results per finite element node in RCB and sent it across to SLB. One final thing to consider when performing a uh, basically a moment field export is to keep the mesh size the same. So hitting Shift E to show the mesh in RCB, we see that because it was a batch export and run, the mesh is exactly the same. However, if we were to continue working on this file in SLB, we have to be aware that any changes to the geometry, any significant changes to the geometry, we'd have to do basically re-export the moment field. Even if we were changing the mesh size, it, it's good practice to re-export the moment field. Now, if the mesh size were to change in SLB, the program would just line linearly interpolate the bending moments based on the um, basically based on this original RCB mesh to the new to the new uh, SLB mesh. So again, even if you make the mesh bigger or s smaller in in, um, in SLB compared to RCB, we'll, we might have some loss of accuracy because the program will be interpolating. Uh, and also, if the Another critical check for the bending moment field is if the perimeter of the slab is changed sort of beyond a distance of uh, let's say plus minus one meter along its edges, uh, the program will, dis will will assume that the bending moment results are no bending moment field results are no longer needed or no longer accurate and it will not use them. So just one, one consideration, basically the rule of thumb is uh, when using export moment field, keep the mesh size the same. So in summary, what we learned today was how to perform a uh, export of the bending moment field. Uh, when we use export of moment field, so in short, it is to uh, design our slabs, either reinforced concrete or post-tension slabs, for the ultimate case for lateral loads. So we export our lateral load cases with uh, bending moment field. 
vertical load cases uh, should be export with uh, basically just the typical export, exporting the reactions from above as well as the loading applied to the slab as calculated by RCB into SLB and PTD and then the forces recalculated for the vertical load cases. Unless of course uh, column wall axial shortening, uh, column wall preset is considered, then we can export uh, vertical loads as bending moment fields as well.